Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. This is a video of opportunity. I wasn't planning on filming anything this week because I'm pretty much spending all my time uh, trying to get some last minute videos up and prepare for SHOT Show, uh, set up appointments for that and all that. But uh, I had somebody I was talking to on the Facebook page asking me questions about he wanted a, a really good machete. And I see this talked about a lot on the different uh, forums and boards and things on Facebook. And what I have generally recommended to people, and you know that if you watch my channel for a long time, is the Tramatina 18 inch machete. It's uh, advice, I, credit where credit's due, it's uh, advice I got from Dave Canterbury several years ago. And he said, uh, South American machetes are the best. That's those are the people that use machetes the most. Uh, those are the people that know the machete. So those companies like Tramontina, Imacasa, and if you don't know, Condor Tool and Knife is a subsidiary of Imacasa. They're basically like the North American marketing branch of Imacasa. Uh, those are like really good machete companies. So. The 18 inch Tramontina machete is one of the most common machetes in the world and they last for years. Uh, in my previous Tramontina machete videos, there's people that comment that say they've had theirs for 15 years and it's still going strong. It's just, it's one of the best. But how this video came about is I was talking to somebody and I said, you know, he's on a budget. I was like, well, these Tramontinas are only 15 bucks. Uh, yeah, you got to get a sheath. I suggested he order it from Machete Specialist. So, talking maybe 20 some bucks for the machete and the sheath. And it's like, you know what? If you don't have the tools to do it, uh, I don't do this all the time because I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to be everybody's mod guy. But I can make a video out of this. So, why don't you order the machete, have it sent to me, and I'll mod it for you, and I'll do a mod video, start to finish. Because you've seen my machete uh, from the previous, the previous videos. Well, this is how it starts out. It starts out with a very, very, oh my God. It starts off with a very upswept tip. This portion right here does not come very sharp at all. It takes a lot of work. It comes with a uh, wood handle. It's kind of blocky, kind of square. So what we're going to do to this to make it better is we're going to create a drop point, which that's going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to shave, shave a little bit of the excess off, and it's going to give it a more uh, straight stab ability for whatever reason. It just I think it looks better. We're going to reprofile the edge. Then we're going to shape this handle to make it more ergonomic. Then we're going we're, as we do that. We're also going to strip the clear coat off of this. We're going to stain it a better color, and then we're going to put some grip grip wrap on it, like the Wilson tape. And then what we what we ha what we end up with is a top notch top shelf tool, which is capable of doing a lot more than just you know cutting shrubbery and, and and foliage and vegetation. I mean I've chopped wood with this thing. That's how tough it is. I mean even Will likes this machete, and he's not really a machete guy. So that being said, this won't be the nicest looking video as far as setting because I'm not going to bring a table out here in a freezing ass cold uh, to shoot it. I'm going to be in the, the dark corners of my basement uh, doing it. But that way you can see uh, step by step what I do to a relatively inexpensive common man affordable Tramatina machete and turn it into a top notch tool. So let's get started. Okay, so here I've got, this is the stock Tramontina up here, and this is my personal modified Tramontina. And you can kind of see what I did as far as, so if I can line this up here. 
what I cut off on mine that I think makes it a little bit more effective. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line this up and you can do it however way you want if you're doing it for the first time you've only got one but I want to make this exactly like mine so I'm just going to mark it with a sharpie. And then that is what I'm going to cut off with the cutting wheel using my rotary tool. Now I don't want to assume that everybody knows everything, but if you don't, keep this in mind because this is going to come in handy over and over again. Anytime you have any kind of these annoying stickers stuck on a blade, I know cold steel does that a lot and a lot of people complain about it. These generally don't want to just peel off. Uh, how you get that stuff off is with WD-40. WD-40 is great at uh, breaking down adhesives. So first I'm going to spray this with WD-40 and just let it soak. Then I'm going to scrape it off a little bit, get as much as I can off. Then I'm going to hit it with WD-40 again and keep scraping until all of that stuff comes off. So anytime you have any kind of adhesive issues, WD-40 is what's going to fix it for you. Okay, this is where the video gets ugly. So generally what I do whenever I'm working on machetes, you don't have to do this, but take whatever safety precautions you feel necessary. I am going to regrind, reprofile the blade anyway. So just to be on the safe side, this isn't really that sharp anyway, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take one of my work sharps and I'm just going to quickly dull the edge. Okay, good. So now it's time to get the rotary tool out and cut this. If you don't know what I mean by rotary tool, I'm talking like a Dremel. Uh, something that looks like this. Faster the better. This is a cutting wheel, cutting disc. This is what we're going to use. This is what we're going to use to actually cut that piece. Now, I generally think it's easier to get it started going straight in like that. I might end up using a couple of these discs, just kind of depends on how it holds out. So in that much time, that's how far we've gotten and it's not really hot so we're still good right there so we'll just keep going just go slow take your time uh, it is a little bit slow but not really I mean I'm already halfway through it So that's the rough cut right there. Not too bad. I might try to smooth it out a little bit with the uh, cutting disc. And then I'm going to use a heavy grit with the work sharp. You can see I got that all kind of smoothed out there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the WorkSharp freehand and try and reprofile this blade a little bit better because right now it's just nowhere near where I want it to be.
That might look a little awkward to you. I'm used to doing that with the work sharps. Just whatever way works best. If you might have a uh, belt grinder or something that's stationary that you can go on here with. That would probably be easier. I'm trying to work with tools that I think more people probably have. I know a lot of people have work sharps because I've been recommending them for so long. So let me continue working on this blade a little bit more. I found on these traditional machetes, the best guide to use is the 15 degree basically the kitchen knife guide puts a great edge on it fast All right, I got my primary edge established pretty sharp I uh, have not gone with the lighter grits yet I'm not going to worry about that right this second it's sharp all the way up to I mean the very very tip could be a little bit sharper but that's not even really a working not an issue with this kind of tool but I generally will go ahead and sharpen it all the way to the tip so I'll just have to do a little bit more work on that but if you're just going to use this for its primary purpose as a machete that little part right there is not all that important what matters is right here and right here is pretty sharp as it is so I will come back to polishing up the rest of the edge later right now let's look at shaping the handle because right now the handle is pretty blocky. So we're going to want to take some material down just a little bit and just make this smoother. Get rid of all these edges. All right, I'm going to switch over to the original work sharp. And I'm just going to put on one of my heavy grit belts. One of my old ones that kind of lost a lot of its life as a sharpening belt. I always hold on to them because these belts will come in handy later for doing this kind of work. So I'm gonna to switch that to tool mode. And we're gonna start smoothing out these edges. And I just start by tracing the sharp edges all the way around and then just keep shaping to taste. Now right there, that's going to be way better than what it was. I mean, already that feels like a smoother, more comfortable handle. And I could stop right there, but I like to go a little bit further with it. Uh, maybe deep in these parts right here. I just think it may, gives it an overall better handle, especially since we're going to put a wrap on it. And you want to make sure you sand at least all the surfaces because we want to get any kind of clear coat off of here so we can add our stain to it later. Okay, this is the next day, uh, continuing working on this project. Uh, it's time to stain the handle. So I've got all the clear coat off of it, so I'll shape the way I want it. The color stain I tend to prefer on most of my stuff, be it the handle to my machete or my tomahawks or anything like that is this uh, Verathane Espresso color. I think this is one of the better ones that I've actually tried. So you just want to make sure your stains all mixed up. Have gloves or else you're going to end up staining your hands and let's stain the handle. Okay, I just take a rag, wrap around two fingers, dip in the stain and just rub it on real good. That's simple. Furnace is kicking on. Apologize for the noise. Careful with the blade here. I 
to get it nice and even, wiping off any excess kind of globs or anything like that. Now just need to let it dry, apply another coat, let it dry, and you'll be good to go. Okay, looking at my work, this is the next day. I didn't really like the way that your thing cured this time. It was a little overly sticky. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using my electric palm sander. I'm just kind of buffing it out with a high grit. I'm using some leftover 3000 grit that I use for polishing my blades. And I'm just smoothing all that out, getting a lot of that excess stickiness off. But it does still kind of impregnate into the wood. It gives it a little bit of grippiness and does help repel a lot of the, the moisture and the water and stuff like that. And I think it gives it more of like a, kind of doing these treatments to it, however you choose to do it, gives it a little bit more of an aged look. And you can play, that's the nice thing about working with wood is you can always sand it, start over or add to it or whatnot. So let me continue finishing uh, buffing this out. All right, let me clean this up real quick and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so I just cleaned up the handle with some Murphy's oil soap. Cleaned it up, dried it off, and this is how it ended up looking. So I think the handle looks pretty nice. It's nice and smooth, it's not sticky. I like that this one I left a little bit more here to lock your finger in than I did on my original one. So I might have to do another one like this because I really like how this handle uh, turned out. Now the last couple steps is, now if you like this, this look, you might want to just leave it as it is. But I look, for me, if it's a tool that I'm going to use, I'm going to make that tool work as good as it can. I'm not going to take pictures of it and be like, ooh, I like looking at this thing. So I'm going to wrap the handle. On mine, I used uh, Magic Wrap or uh, whatever that stuff is. I forget the self-adhesive uh, plumbing wrap. My mind's going blank right now. But I'm going to use on this one some just plain old Wilson grip that I, I use on pretty much everything. And then I'm going to finish uh, cleaning up the edge. Oh, the other thing I did, that sticker... How I got that off is overnight, I, I couldn't find any WD-40, so I've got some of this WD-40 silicone stuff. I just soaked that sticker down overnight, and then when I came down here in the morning, I took a razor blade and just, you know, scraped it right off, uh, sprayed a little bit more of that on, and rubbed the remainder off, and it's nice and clean. So all that's left is wrap the handle and tune up the edge. Now on most handles, be this uh, Becker handles or machine, uh, machete handles or whatnot, the total length of the Wilson wrap that you get is going to be too long. So you're going to want to cut mm, right around a third of it off. Now you don't want to cut off, cut it off of this end. This is the finishing end. This is the tapered end that's got the adhesive uh, part that holds it in place. So you want to make sure that you cut it off this end. Now for this machete, I'd say this is, I've done this so many times I can just eyeball it. I would recommend actually wrapping it and see, but I know that's going to be about perfect for me. So this is the uh, this is what I'm going to use now. Just put it on the handle. Now you want to be sure when you start wrapping that you've got this the 
portion that's going to stick facing the correct direction. You want it pointing down. So I'll generally start up here at the top, angle it downwards like this, hold it with my thumb, pull it tight, and then start to wrap. And what you can do sometimes is just use some tighter wraps. Maybe not space the overlap so much. Then sometimes it feels funny. See, I got it upside down. That's why you got to check. Just point it up, wrap, get it with your finger. finishing it off. Now sometimes on some of these there'll be a little bit of the end that doesn't have sticky stuff on it. So generally I'll take a pair of scissors if I have them just cut a little bit of that edge off. So that way the edge of the wrap is going to have perfect adhesive on it. We just pull that off nice and tight, mount it down. So that is a perfectly wrapped handle. And now it is super comfortable, super grippy, and you're going to have a really hard time having this tool slip out of your hand. You're out there swinging, hacking out vines and wood and whatever else you're doing. So now I uh, just got to tune up the blade to my specs. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm pushing down with my work sharp so it's wrapping perfectly around that grind, that edge. And that's going to make the entire edge just look way, way better. And your, your end result is it's going to be a lot sharper too. And, I can, and one thing, I don't think I ever corrected myself. When I did my work sharp comparison videos, I did not realize that this rocker switch, you can lock this thing on. You just got to push it forward. So, big fail on my part. I had that thing for like a year and a half and didn't know that. You can definitely, when you're using the rougher grit, let me see if I can get it. Should see a little bit of a burr there. And you can either go down to the next belt or you can use a leather strop, which is what I prefer to do. And then keep going. My biggest goal is making sure this section right here is sharp because that's generally the dullest part of the tramontina that you get. Hey, the furnace is kicking on. Just had the film right next to it. Somebody's going to give me sharpening tips. I don't need them. I do things my way. Gotten by just fine so far. I do it more by feel than system. Alright, to finish this off, I'm going to put this back in the 
regular position. And I've got the purple belt on and I'm going to use the kitchen knife guide. Kitchen knife guide is what you want to use for like real machetes, like two millimeters, uh, two millimeter thick machetes. That's going to get it a lot sharper than using the 20 degree guide, which is for outdoor knives. I need Maxpedition to send me another catalog because I'm about out of my cut test papers. <laughs> This one's ready. So there you go guys. That is the complete justification process for the Tramontina 18 inch uh, wood handled machete. This is a Jessica List item. Do not be fooled by the fact that it does not cost a lot of money because this right here will last 30 freaking years. Uh, it's, it's one of those things you need to have in your kit because it will do so much and it's not expensive at all. I mean, I've chopped down freaking trees with this thing. Well, not this one, but mine. It works. It's tough. The guys in Brazil, they know how to freaking make machetes. That's all there is to it. Now, how much did this cost, you ask? Well, <clears throat> since he got the machete and he just had it shipped straight to me, I've got his invoice here. Uh, MacheteSpecialist.com They've got good prices and they've got tons of machetes. See, you could do the same process with a whole bunch of different machetes that you can get on there that are wood handled. doesn't even have to be Tramatina. There's a bunch of them. But uh, this 18 inch wood handled bush machete with canvas sheath costs $22.99. So this here costs $22. Bucks. Downside is they're, they're always a I've always found them to be slightly expensive on the shipping, even though it does get to you pretty quick, priority mail, but $13.22 for shipping. So his total cost was $36.21, but that is for a tool that properly maintained will last a lifetime. And it looks a lot better now, it just, when you first get one and it's got that extra weight up top, and it's got the blocky smooth handle, it just doesn't it doesn't feel secure but you know when you put the right modifications on it now it feels like an extension of your hand it handles like an extension of your hand perfectly balanced that tip makes a difference it makes a lot of difference not only do you have uh, direct piercing power but it's just a, it's just a balance issue. It just makes a huge, huge difference. So there you go. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. Hopefully that helps you pimp out some of your own machetes. Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash prepared mind 101. Google Plus, Instagram, and Twitter. And my store is preparedmy101.com. Uh, that's my Amazon store. I do believe there are some of these machetes on there. Uh, it's often third-party sellers, so I can't say for sure. I haven't looked in a while. But the place I know always has them, which I have no affiliation with whatsoever, is machetespecialist.com. So check them out if you're in the market. And I did tell him about the leather sheath that I have with mine. He said he couldn't find them, so maybe they ran out of those leather sheets. I don't know. But the, uh, the canvas sheaths, 
they do feel a lot I think they're using a heavier material than they used to. It's definitely a decent sheath. So no complaints there. So there you go guys. See you next time.